Have you ever trusted a friend too much and got betrayed? Today we delve into the intriguing world of power dynamics as we explore the second law of power. Never put too much trust in friends, learn how to use enemies. This law, penned by Robert Greene in his seminal work, The 48 Laws of Power, underlines the potential pitfalls of misplaced trust and the unexpected advantages of having adversaries. The crux of this law lies in the understanding that even the closest of friends can harbor self-interest that, when divergent from yours, can lead to manipulation or even betrayal. Conversely, the presence of enemies can keep you vigilant, sharpen your strategic thinking, and provide opportunities for growth. We often assume that friends share our interests and goals. But what happens when these assumptions are exploited, when trust becomes a weapon? So, let's dive deeper into why trusting friends can sometimes lead to unexpected consequences. Why does placing too much trust in friends become a potential pitfall? Let's delve into this. When we trust our friends, we expose ourselves, we become vulnerable. This vulnerability isn't always a bad thing, but in the world of power dynamics, it can be a double-edged sword. It's human nature to act out of self-interest, and when a friend's goals diverge from ours, this can lead to betrayal. A friend might exploit the trust you've placed in them, using it as a tool for manipulation to further their own agenda. The closer the friendship, the deeper the betrayal can cut. Furthermore, an over-reliance on friends can breed complacency. We often let our guard down around those we trust, assuming they share our interests, our goals. But this state of comfort can be dangerous. It can blind us to the shifting sands of power dynamics, to the subtle signs of changing loyalties. Robert Greene, author of The 48 Laws of Power, suggests that we should constantly question motives, even among friends. This isn't about fostering distrust, but rather about maintaining a position of power. It's about understanding that in the game of power, everyone has their own interests at heart. So, as we navigate our way through the complex web of friendships and power dynamics, it's worth remembering this. Never forget that even the closest friends can have divergent goals. On the flip side, how can having enemies be strategically advantageous? It may sound paradoxical, but enemies can often serve as a catalyst for personal growth and strategic prowess. Let's delve deeper into this concept. Firstly, having enemies keeps you vigilant. It's the age-old principle of keeping your friends close and your enemies closer. Your adversaries compel you to stay alert, observe your surroundings, and anticipate potential threats. This heightened awareness can be a powerful tool in enhancing your strategic thinking. It's like a game of chess. You're constantly predicting your opponent's moves, planning your defense, and plotting your attack. Secondly, enemies can serve as a diversion from your weaknesses. It's a classic strategy. Divert attention from your flaws by focusing on a perceived adversary. This allows you to manipulate situations and control narratives to your advantage. Think of it as a magic trick. The magician diverts the audience's attention while performing the actual sleight of hand. Moreover, enemies can provide invaluable lessons. They expose your vulnerabilities, challenge your ideas, and force you to confront your shortcomings. In other words, your enemies can be your greatest teachers. They push you to improve, to adapt, and to become a better version of yourself. So while it's important to foster positive relationships, don't underestimate the strategic value of your adversaries. They can sharpen your skills, distract from your weaknesses, and provide opportunities for growth and improvement. Remember, your enemies can be your greatest teachers. History is replete with examples of betrayals and strategic use of enemies. One of the most infamous treacheries in history involves the Roman leader Julius Caesar and his closest friend Brutus. Despite their seemingly strong friendship, Brutus was part of the conspiracy to assassinate Caesar in the pursuit of his own ideals. This betrayal serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of placing too much trust in friends, especially in matters of power and influence. But it's not just about the betrayals. The strategic use of enemies has been a cornerstone in the rise and consolidation of power for many leaders and politicians. Take for instance the ancient kings and emperors, they frequently used the presence of external threats to unify their kingdom, rallying their people against a common enemy. This diversion of attention away from internal issues often helped maintain their control and dominance. Fast forward to the modern era and you'll find that this law is still very much applicable. In corporate environments, for example, trusting colleagues blindly can open doors to backstabbing or betrayal. It's crucial to maintain a level of skepticism, to understand the motives of those around you and not to let your guard down completely. In the political arena, politicians often create adversaries to rally public support. 
The portrayal of an external threat serves to consolidate power and maintain control. Just think about the various political narratives that emphasize external threats. These narratives are carefully constructed to influence public sentiment and rally support. This law of power isn't about promoting cynicism or distrust. Rather, it's about understanding the dynamics of power and how trust or the lack of it can influence these dynamics. It's about being discerning in relationships, evaluating motives, and maintaining a healthy level of skepticism. In the game of power, trust is a luxury you can seldom afford. So while it's important to nurture relationships, it's equally vital to understand the potential implications of misplaced trust and the strategic value of having adversaries. So, should we trust no one and see everyone as an enemy? Not exactly. The second law of power doesn't advocate for cynicism or paranoia, but rather, it encourages a balanced approach. It's about discernment, the ability to see situations and relationships for what they truly are, not what we want them to be. It's about evaluating the motives of those around us, understanding that people, even friends, may act out of self-interest. It's about realizing that enemies can provide opportunities for growth, keeping us vigilant and strategic in our actions. And it's about maintaining a level of healthy skepticism, not a mistrust that isolates us from others, but a skepticism that protects us from manipulation and betrayal. It's about finding that sweet spot between trusting too little and trusting too much. Striking a balance between trust and skepticism is the key to navigating power dynamics effectively. Trust, but verify. Remain open but be cautious. This is the essence of the second law of power.